Right, so the game we've got in front of us on the left in red is Fared Rommel. Rommel. <laughs> Rommel playing the 7th Mechanized Corps up against Cole Cole playing the 11th SS. Uh, Panzergrenadier Nordland. Both players on Maverick income, so both going for the B phase income plays. Let's have a look at the deck for Rommel. We've got the seventh mech, plenty of T-34s, C-phase card of 22 T-34s. I mean, at 55 points, that's not a bad choice, but it is C-phase card. You can still afford them with that 80 points of Maverick income, so I can see why it's it kind of been chosen, but you can only afford one per tick. So he's got to last 22 ticks in C-phase to get all of those T-3476s out. They're all thereabouts. Because <laughs> uh, he's he's going to want to buy other units as well. He's got a whole C-phase... Wow. He's got a C-phase card of PE2s at 110 points. Um, and a C-phase card of Strokey DP. So despite choosing Maverick income, this is not really a Maverick deck. Uh, with those C-Phase cards. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it goes, whether he can afford all those C-Phase units, but I'm kind of thinking he, he probably won't be able to afford them all. And he's got some hefty, expensive B-Phase units as well, with the two ISU-122Ss. I mean, that's two minutes of income. And the KV-1E off-maps, that's another two minutes of income. So that's four minutes of B-Phase income gone in those four units. Switching over to the right hand side, we've got the deck of Cole Cole with the 11th SS Panzergrenadier Nordland, also Maverick Income. He also has a C phase card of Panzergrens, uh, but no other, well, a C phase card of Stug as well. So both players kind of having plenty of C phase equipment despite being Maverick. I mean, it, it might be that because this is League. They both know the income before the start of the game, so they've kind of adjusted in case the game stalls. It goes really long, so they've put in some extra um, C-Phase cards in, maybe. But most likely, this is just their general deck, and they, they haven't altered it. Um, Milk Cheese told me last week that he didn't alter his deck, despite being a Division 3 or 2 player. I think Milk Cheese is a Division 2 player. Can't quite remember right now off the top of my head but yeah so i don't know whether these guys this is a division four match whether they'll be altering the deck but you know they are they do have the opportunity to do so plenty of flat 4188 six of them in total you can get all all six out uh, in this game you've got the jet bombers in b phase and we got the stuka zoo fuss uh, it'd be interesting to see those units in action. I don't think... We, we did cast Norland, I think, last week. But we didn't see the Stuka Zoo fuss. So it might be nice to actually uh, see that one in action. Let's get into the game. Halbreg says some questionable choices. But the PE2s aren't it. I don't know. I think there's too many PE2s in C-Phase for me. Uh, on an 80-point Maverick income. But that's my opinion. So, on the left-hand side, we have Farid Rommel. I, I can't help but say Rommel. <laughs> uh, playing the 7th mech, going fairly strong down south with some fast-moving PTRS units from the looks of it. And on the right-hand side, we have Cole Cole, uh, also going fairly heavy down south. Uh, playing the 11th SS Nordland, so the early engagement will likely be in the south of this battlefield. Although we do have plenty of 52 Ps unloading in the center. 30 point unit now. Kind of feeling like they could be replaced by M42 guns fairly easily. The Puma's pushing forwards, but the PTRS taking shots at the Flemingworthers. Be interesting to see whether they can take down that Puma. Side shot, they should be able to. Early flak 41 from Coco, especially if it gets a rear shot. Leader knocked out. That Puma is still going. I think it's out of range now. He's got very far, but I'm not sure it can really take on the T-34. So unless he kind of maneuvers it around the south, I'm not quite sure what he's going to do with that Puma. Looks like up north, one of the Pioneers has been pinned down, but no real movements across either side. Lots of Tanko Disaniki's going into the center for Rommel. 
JU87 coming in from Coco, looking to hit the 52 Ps. Just too many 52 Ps, though, really, for the uh, JU87s to take care of. Let's dive down with it. Oh, takes out both of them. Well, maybe I should take that back. <laughs> Puma. What is that? That's firing back at the PTRS-41, but Rommel should know that Puma's there. Hasn't really ordered his units to kind of try and deal with it. I think... It could be interesting. That Puma might be able to get a nice rear shot. Although Coco's moving it kind of out of position. Let's see whether he can get a rear shot onto something. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to. That SU-76 is going to turn in time. And actually, I think it switched targets. And Coco reverses it back away. GU-87 finally uh, takes takes itself out of the battlefield. Rommel, I think, is... No, I don't think he... I'm not sure whether he's aware that that Puma is behind him. The way he's moving these units. I'm not sure whether he knows that. Looks like up north we have had an M2A1 push forwards. Trying to uh, pick up the surrenders. And here's the Tanko Disaniki push into the center. There is a Flak 41 protecting the road. But the Tankos will be able to get through. Unload him right in the face of the Pioneers. Down goes a couple of half tracks. Uh, one of the Tankos will surrender. One of the uh, Pioneers goes down as well. But the Panzer Grenadiers have been able to kind of hold off the push. M2A1 goes down to a close range Panzerfaust. And the Tanko push has stalled. I had a feeling that was going to be successful. So. It uh, looks like. Uh, Rommel brings in a PE2, but it's a bit too late to really help out those units. Could have done with this before then launching the Tanko Disaniki attack. And he may well have been able to pick up a lot of surrenders. Puma is still in play. SU-76 is moving forwards over the open ground. Strokey pushing forwards as well. Looks like they're going to unload. T-34-76 very far forward now. Might be able to uh, catch a Stug unawares. This Puma... Is it going to be able to ambush anyone? I keep keeping my eyes on it. Ooh, down goes a unit of Panzergrens there. So that's a nice kill from the Pan, uh, from the T-3476. Looks like a Tanko Disaniki push might be going on in the north. We'll have to keep our eyes on that. Rommel picks up the flag in the center. And Coco going for a mostly vehicle defense right now in the south. He's, he did have a unit of infantry in here, but it, it went down. And that Puma might be able to catch these Strokey as they go by. I guess both players are really playing with the tanks, aren't they? A <laughs> very aggressive vehicle play from both players. Here comes the Puma shot. Oh, the Strokey unloads. So Rommel finally noticed that Puma. Because there was no way he would have unloaded that otherwise. Uh, but the Strokey are going to get suppressed. I mean, the Puma won't get the surrender, but it might just have time to kind of destroy the unit. Some reinforcements going into the centre town. Tanko Disaniki's trying to push forwards on foot. But the Panzergrens are going to be able to sit back and use the MG42s, or in this case the MG26, to keep those Tanko Disaniki at bay. Flak 41 in the center ground, along with the SIG-33, trying to help out the infantry. It's not enough to keep the stroke at bay in the center. Rommel picks up the center in the south of this battlefield. Still has the Puma behind enemy lines to deal with, although it looks like the T-34-76 is now trying to go in the area and discover that. But I think Rommel picking up that 16-8, he'll be very happy with the southern portion of this battlefield. And he's still being very aggressive up north as well. 17-7 for Rommel. Both of these players on Maverick Income, so really it's all about trades between the two players. I wouldn't have said Rommel's traded amazingly better than Cole Cole, but I do think his units are far cheaper. So... In terms of points, down goes the Puma. I don't really think... Uh, Rommel's like destroyed 
tons. He's not destroyed as much stuff. The, the amount being destroyed is probably equal, but um, for every unit of coal coals that's going down, it's more expensive than one of Rommel's going down. And it's more expensive to kind of reinforce them. So you start to see the buildup of units on the ground. Uh, Rommel's starting to get many more units than coal coal on the ground. And I think he is going to be able to continue this. And he's in a strong position to pick up the victory right now. It took me a long time to get to that explanation. But that's how I'm feeling it. I don't feel as if Rommel's like destroying tons and tons more units. I think he's just destroying more expensive units. And Coco can't really reinforce because his units are more expensive. So it's leading to more units on the ground for Rommel. And it kind of continues to snowball. That's kind of how the uh, Russians like to play this game though. And it works successfully for a lot of Russian divisions. Not every Russian division. Um, a lot with the IS-2s as well play uh, with much more expensive units. But certainly with the 7th mech, you can push forwards with the cheap T-34s and get a lot of kills with them if you're successful. Another JU-87D5 coming in here. I'm not exactly sure what it's going after. Strokey D. Uh, plain line Strokey unit. Doesn't quite get the kill, but does take down a number of men there. Pins them down in position. Coco's desperately trying to get a defense up on this ridge line. Tanks are pushing forwards. The T-34 is about to crest the hill, and three, three of them all together will do a very good job against what's here. It's really just the Stugs that can kind of defeat them. The SIG-33 can use the heat shells at this kind of range. Down goes an SBW-231. Down goes another 231. Trying to keep eyes on both of these engagements here. Here comes the first SBW heat shell. Does get a kill. As we've got PE2s in the sky as well. T-34s returning fire on the SIG. And it's not going to get another shot in. Just gets another shot in. Doesn't get the kill though. And the SIG will go down. Black 41 not quite able to get the uh, angle on those tanks. JU-87 coming in here trying to help out. Might be able to get the kill on the uh, T-3476. If it gets a decent hit. Doesn't really get that decent hit. Losing that SIG, again, like I was saying earlier, it's just an expensive unit to lot to lose. And uh, Rommel continuing to be able to afford these T-3476s and getting the kills that he needs. Frame rate dying for anyone else. Uh, let me know how the quality goes. If it is, we can adjust. We've got a couple of uh, WLA motorbikes on the way in. SIG trying to push forwards. It's out of range of those heat shells, though. And the T-3476 able to take easy shots at that SIG. T-3476 takes a big hit from the Jagdpanzer. Captured Russian unit. Down it goes. Will it be able to take down the other one as well? T-34 gets first shot off. Big hit. Ooh. Nice job from Yet in the Jagdpanzer SU-76R. Keeps the attack down on the southern side at bay. In comes a PE-2. I think he's going after the Stug 3G Führer here. Drops its payload. And books itself out of there. No, after the Stug 4, does get the nice kill there. Killing those Stug 4s as well is uh, definitely what Rommel needs to do because the T-3476s should really struggle against those Stugs um, at longer range, not necessarily at short range. The Mortars are getting into action against the Flak 41, and that has lost a number of men there. May well go down to this next volley of fire. MG-34s able to uh, stop firing on the Strokers, but there is still a T-34 in the way. Early Panther Bs onto the field, and we have the Jet Bomber in action now as well. Is that going to drop? Down goes the Flak 4188. Is it going to drop on the tank or on the infantry? We're just waiting for it. It is on the tank. It does destroy it, but unfortunately the Panzergrens get pinned down, being so close to that 1,000 kilogram bomb going off in their faces. Not kind of surprised that they don't want to push forwards after seeing that. And 
uh, Coco does start to um, destroy a lot of the equipment down on the southern side. He may well be able to start pushing his way back through these Russian forces, especially with the support of the Panthers, although the Flak 41 going down is a bit of a blow. The Panthers. The yeah, Panthers do take out the T-3476. Rommel has to retreat his strokers. No more support from the vehicles in there. It looks like it's going to be SU-152 versus Panther. Panther should win the engagement. Yeah, and Rommel backs off. SU-152 can only fire HE, so not really able to effectively destroy the Panther. Although we'll, we'll be able to over time. In comes a couple of PE-2s to try and hit that Panther. Let's get on board the rearmost. As they both drop their payloads. Panther trying to back away. Was successfully avoid all of those bombs as a third PE-2 now on his way into the battlefield. So Rommel is desperately trying to use those PE-2s to destroy the Panthers and looks like he may well use all of those PE2s in his deck after all. Stroke DP pushing forwards on foot at the moment. He has the 16-8, so Rommel's definitely in a decent position right now, but Coco has started to make his way back into the game. He does need to pick up flags, really. No, not much movement up north. It looks like we do have the off-map going up there from Rommel. Might be able to push his way through there, and that might give him the second flank. Given though the southern flank has been uh, halted, or the push has been halted. Um, don't worry, I will fix the quality issues uh, for the next cast. Panther pushing forwards along the road down south. And the Panzergrens on their way into the forest. The uh, smoke from the mortars trying to put off the line of sight to the stroke of DPs holding the flag in the center. Rommel desperately trying to hold that flag, doesn't want to lose it. And the Panzergrens are going to get pinned down from the uh, stroke here across the hill. Panther coming in, going to start supporting those Panzergrens and a couple of JU-87s from the uh, skies as well. Rommel responds with a Xenot 37mm flat gun, and in comes the ace of the division, Denisov. Looking to get on the back of one of those JU-87 D5. Should be able to get the kill here. Ooh, beautiful play to shoot that one down. Might circle onto the second one, trying to weave back out of here. But the Focke Wolf 190A8 catches Denisov. So just a single kill from the ace of the division. We got a lot of 250 slash nines racing down the hill now. Trying to help out Cole Cole push forwards with the support of the Panther overlooking this southern side. And he has to get SDK have said 250 slash nines with those auto cannons with the 20 mils. Going to take care of the infantry. The Panther supporting. This is a beautiful play here from Cole Cole. And as long as he brings in infantry to capture the uh, ground, he can definitely make some significant progress down here in the south. PE2 on the way in might spoil Cole Cole's day. Focke Wolf 190A8 takes a chance at one of them, doesn't quite get the kill, and uh, tries to switch to the other one. Another Focke Wolf coming in. SDKF SDK sets push forwards and the SBW in front as well. Will the 190A8 be able to uh, get the kills here? Unfortunately, I think he's got the... Yeah, he's trying to go after those PE2s. He's trying to micro onto the back. I think he might get this kill down here in the south. Especially because Rommel hasn't called that one away. So that one is going to go down to the Focke Wolf 190A8. That does at least deal with one of those pe Twos, flam pan, uh, sorry, the Flammenwerfers come in to cry, try and pick up the ground. Panther pushing forwards over the open ground as well as the Focke Wolf straight the SU-152. Don't think they're uh, really going to get through this thick armor, but it looks like it is pretty heavily damaged. Uh, it has taken several hits as well as a direct hit from the Panther D earlier in the game. Flammenwerf has just pushed through that center position, looking to pick up the flags. 14-10 still to Rommel. He's got plenty of time though. 
Let's go, welcome. And I uh, hope you enjoy the games. Another couple of PE2s on the way. Looks like they're going to go after the Panther D here. It is stood in position this time. Ooh, down it goes. So it does take away a big tank from the southern side. There is another Panther in here, and Cole Cole's got another one on the way as well. So it doesn't quite decimate the tank support. But it does definitely set Cole Cole back for now from this uh, pushback on the southern side. The SDKFs will be able to put a huge weight of fire down onto the T-3476. Might be able to keep this one at bay. I'd definitely be trying to push forwards here and try and get some kind of surrender. Um, or at least getting close enough and just surround the vehicle, trying to hit it from the sides and the rear. The other two T-3476 has come in. Cole Cole does respond, pushing them forwards, trying to get out of line of sight of the other T-3476s. I think that's a wise move, keeping the T-30, uh, the 231 away as well. Uh, wise play there from Cole Cole, trying to keep these 250-9s out of line of sight. Does pick up a flag down here, but... Ramel does have the 1410. While we've been watching the south, the off map has come down up north and there is a push forward with the T-3476 and SU-76I. Coco responds with a Panther D. Puma takes down the T-3476 at close range. That's definitely going to help him out. Stern Pioneers rush in to try and hold the ground. There is still an SU-76I that stands in the way of Coco at the moment. The Flak 41 on the, ro on the road helping to cover this centre town. The T-3476 3476 pushing forwards. I think Rommel needs to take that thing off the road. Does eventually go down, but the Panzergrens will be able to kind of reoccupy their positions in that center town, and the Panther D will be able to cover off against the SU 76i. KV1E pushing up. Does put down a third off map from the looks of it into that center town. Might be the second one, but it looks like it's probably the third off map. Third and fourth. Although that is a 203mm off map, so that may well be the second one, because I think they only get two chargers on that off map. Looks like all of the... Uh, no, the SDK said 250-9s have been able to push really quite far forwards. I don't think they'll be able to surprise the Strokers. The reinforcing Panther has come into position. T-3476 might be able to get a close-range shot, but at this kind of range, shouldn't be able to destroy the Panther. Yep, one-shot kill from that Panther D. Nice job from Coco down there. So nothing really from Rommel in the centre of this battlefield that can kind of kill the Panther D right now. And Coco, well, apart from the PE2s in the sky, that are going to come in and try and do the job. There is a Flak 41 88 mil going to come in and try and protect the sky. Panther D doesn't go down. Focke Wolf 190A8 might be in trouble now from the P40N coming in here. Yeah, does get behind it and should go down. That's a bit of a loss for Cole Cole. Takes away his fighter presence, but he does have another one uh, available to him and a couple of Flak 41s coming onto the ground. Despite all this, though, the push in the north has come to fruition or in the center ground. The MG, uh, the Panzergrens with the MG26s were not able to uh, kind of retake positions in that town. And Rommel did get himself a 17-7 or does so. The Northern reinforcements with the um, Sturm, I think they were Sturm Pioneers coming in here, haven't been able to hold the ground. Strokies have rushed forwards. There's just one Pioneer and one Panther. But the flags are all held by Rommel right now. And the PE2's trying to come in to hit the big heavy tanks that Rommel's struggling to defeat. Buckle Wolf 190A8 trying to get on the back of them and destroy as many of these PE2's as possible. It looks like that time uh, the Panther D was missed. And there's two Panther D's in the center ground. But yeah, Rommel holds the flags. He holds the 17-7 and there's just 30 minutes left on the clock. Coco isn't, be able, isn't going to be able to come back. He just doesn't have enough units on the ground, really. He has some very strong units with the Panthers and the Flak 41s and the IG-18s. But just not enough to hold the important locations. This one being held by a PTRS-41. This one being held by a Tanko Disaniki. This one kind of being held by the Strokey. Uh, the Pioneer may just hold that one out you know this one here was being held by one strokey dp so rommel does pick up the victory 
21 minutes 27 seconds congratulations to him commiserations to coco he actually trades positive despite losing the game and it was how i kind of said uh, earlier on in the game rommel was really just because coco's units were more expensive he was kind of he, he got ahead because he had more units on the ground and that what that's what's ultimately led to kind of Coco's defeat. He just didn't have the units on the ground to hold the important posi positions despite getting more kills. Uh, the Russians just had more units. Let's have a look at the kills for uh, Rommel. PE2s, I think they were probably the saving grace of Rommel, really. A um, few Panzergren kills... Uh, Panther D kill here. SU-152 picked up the SIG in the Flak-41 kill. That's a nice work from that SU-152 because the Flak-41 going down uh, will have helped enable the PE-2s to continue their bombing runs. T-3476 did pick up a nice kill list here. Uh, Adamovic with the Stug 3G and the Jagdpanzer SU-76, the captured Russian um, SU-76I, I think. More PE2 kills. Mm, I guess it was only that single Panther, was it? Stuck four there. Single Panther. So in the end, it was just a single Panther from those PE2s. Felt like there was more than that that went down. Yeah. That was it, clearly. So Coco was able to keep his heavy units alive, his Panthers, but he just didn't have the rest of them out on... He just didn't have enough units out on the ground because he was buying kind of single high-cost units. Let's have a look at the kills for Coco. Black 41 didn't really pay itself off early on. Just the T-3476 kill and a couple of half-tracks. Mm, yeah, didn't really pay for itself in total. Puma, uh, which was the one that got behind enemy lines. I'm assuming it's this one here, Eberhardt. Uh, that one got really far for a long time. It was really interesting. Coco had that unit behind enemy lines, but it didn't really do anything. Despite it being behind enemy lines for a really large part of the uh, early, early portion of the game. Panther D picking up the KV-1S kill. Another one picking up the Xenarch kill. Focke-Wolf did pick off Denisov and a PE-2 and a P-40. That Focke-Wolf's clearly paid for itself. Panther D down here took out the SU-152. That paid for itself. Panther D down here didn't quite pay for itself. So I think over time, if Coco had more time, he was going to win that game. Um, he just didn't have that time. And, you know, Rommel played it really well. Rommel played it really well.